Hello there, finally time for a rare beauty review. I've been so excited to try Selena Gomez's new brand, so thank you for bearing with me. I've placed my order on launch day, but it was a long, complicated journey to Australia. More on that later. I'm sure Selena stands have been busy shopping since the launch on September 3rd, but I think there's a lot to like here if you're a regular beauty lover too. Plenty to talk about, so I'll run through some general thoughts on celebrity brands, the style of rare beauty, the packaging, my unfortunate shipping experience, and the main event product reviews and swatches. I purchased the Dewy Liquid Blush, Matte Liquid Blush, Liquid Luminizer, Liquid Eyeliner, Dewy Lip Balm and Lip Souffle. You'll meet them all in a minute. I'll also leave links below to three of my favourite creators, Amanda Zed, Harry Makes It Up and Hayley Kim so you can see these products in action on them. The beauty industry is already chock-a-block with celebrity brands, but it seems like Selena didn't just slap her name on any old product. Rare Beauty feels thoughtful, considered and cohesive. It's cruelty-free and vegan, sulfate and paraben-free too. It's more reasonably priced than a lot of other brands. It's now beating on Sephora bestseller lists. It has products that appeal to a range of beauty shoppers, not just her super fans, and importantly, it was inclusive right from the start. When any big brand launches, this should be how it's done. There are 48 foundation and concealer shades, a variety of lip and highlighter tones, different blush finishes to suit different skin types, and inclusive campaign imagery. I've seen the comparisons to Fenty Beauty, perhaps fairly in terms of the style of the packaging and that inclusive starting point, but to me, Rare Beauty feels like a much more shy, understanding friend of Fenty. Something I really connected with is how Selena speaks about beauty and her relationship with makeup. The style of my own channel is always about having fun with makeup, using it to express yourself and enhance your features and feel confident with it, not less without it. So when I heard Selena say that makeup should be the accessory to compliment you, I was like, oh my god, she's right. That's brilliant. I just think it's a beautiful way of putting it and such a healthy perspective, particularly given her massive influence over a young audience. I'm a firm believer in wearing what you enjoy, whether that's no makeup makeup or full glam, but doing it because it makes you feel good, not because someone told you it should make you feel good. So I find the overall approach of Rare Beauty really refreshing and encouraging, particularly for young people growing up with so much pressure to look filtered and flawless all the time. There's also a more substantial side. Selena and Rare Beauty launched the Rare Impact Fund and aim to raise $100 million over the next 10 years to help provide mental health services to underserved communities. I know Selena has been very vocal about mental health and it's something that's important to me too, so I really admire her for making it part of the brand's DNA. There's been quite a lot of conversation around the packaging. I'm sure you've seen top comments under most Rare Beauty reviews explaining that the ball design on top of several products was meant to make them more accessible and easier to use with a disability or conditions like arthritis which Selena suffers from. I actually haven't been able to find a source for that information. I don't know if Selena herself said it, the brand doesn't seem to have written it anywhere, so there's talk that it might have started as a fan theory. If you do know where that came from, please let me know, and if it's true, I think it's another wonderful touch. Briefly, in terms of shipping, the brand is currently only available in the US, so if you're desperate to get your hands on it overseas, based on my experience, I'd advise against using a forwarding service. Some of the products in my order were deemed dangerous, I thought there was a mix-up and they might have confused these bottles for nail polish, but the liquid luminizer and matte liquid blush do have a little flammable symbol, so they were banned from being shipped. A friend luckily saved the day and got these to me, but hopefully the brand will expand in 2021 and make it much easier for us all. So that's why this video video is much later than planned. Let's get into it. Starting with the product I was most looking forward to. Can you guess? Cream Blush. Selena's Soft Pinch Liquid Blush comes in two different finishes, dewy and matte, with eight shades in total. I picked two dewy shades and one matte. They're described as weightless, long-lasting liquid blushes that create a soft, healthy flush. The dewy texture is so nice and light on the skin, and even the matte version doesn't feel thick or heavy, just slightly more powdery to the touch. The main thing to know about this formula is just how pigmented it is. A little bit goes a very long way, so I don't know how anyone's going to be able to finish these bottles. The stopper inside is a little bit small, so make sure you have a firm grip on the bottle when you're pulling the applicator out. The big doe foot is a really really nice shape to dot straight onto your cheeks, but you definitely don't need much product. I wipe away all of the excess first and the dots still create enough colour. 
The brand says to apply one to two dots on each cheek and that's plenty. I love a lot of blush, but three dots borders on a bit too much. I apply blush in exactly the same place as Selena. I was so glad to see her do this in a Vogue video so you can see what I mean. I blend it quite high along my cheekbones. It's partly where I naturally flush, but I also think it's really youthful and sort of lifts the face. I quickly pat and tap the dots into the skin with my fingertips. The best seller and Selena's favorite, Joy, is called a dewy muted peach. Muted peach is basically all I ever need to hear when it comes to cream blush. This is such a lovely shade. You can really build it up or sheer it right out for barely their color. For a dewy liquid blush, I've been really impressed by the lasting power. I definitely noticed that glow and color hanging around for a lot longer than most other formulas I use. I also picked up Grateful, a dewy true red. I'm always banging on about sun protection, so I don't ever have a real sun-kissed look, but this kind of shade seemed like a nice way to cheat a beachy, really rosy cheek. I love the way it looks on Selena, really healthy and fresh. The great thing about this dewy finish is that it's not a sticky or tacky or shiny dewy, it just looks and feels like your skin after your moisturizer has sunk in. These remind me of the Danessa Myricks Vision Flush formula I love. You can see several shades in a recent video and it just appeared in my everyday makeup routine too. A product that's very pigmented and buildable but shears out beautifully. Then there's the Soft Pinch Matte Liquid Blush. I was drawn to the shade Love Straight Away, a matte terracotta. Harry Makes It Up and Amanda Z picked up this one too so you can see how they apply it with a sponge but I find it blends perfectly with fingertips too. It just has a slightly more powdery smooth feel when you're working it in. It looks intense but I was very very impressed by how evenly it shears out. The colour reminds me of one of my favourite blush shades, Nude Stick Sunkissed, so you can guess what I might say next. It looks lovely on the eyes too. Next, the Positive Light Liquid Luminizers. Described as a silky, second skin liquid highlight for a buildable, long-lasting, luminous finish. I love cream highlighters and really dewy formulas that almost look a bit glossy on the skin, so I was interested to see the finish of this. The look and idea of this reminded me of Glossier Play Nightshine, the liquid highlighter that set and had a fairly dry finish on the skin, so it wasn't my favorite, but I was pleasantly surprised by Rare Beauty's take. This contains very fine, light reflecting pearl particles and it's certainly pigmented, similar story to the cream blush, so I remove the excess, then pat one to two dots on my cheekbones. I picked up Mesmerize, Selena's go-to shade, which is called a rose bronze. I probably think of this as a pink champagne, the sort of rosy highlight tone I love, but there actually is a bit of depth to this and when you look up really close, the super fine shimmer has a bit of bronze to it. The brand says you can mix this formula into your foundation for an all over glow, but it's probably a touch too shimmery for me to try that. I was also drawn to the shade Captivate, a copper highlight. This is the second darkest shade in the range, so it would be beautiful on deep skin tones, but I can't resist a multitasking copper product. This creates a lovely natural glow when you sheer it out as a coppery eyeshadow, and I really like it as a highlighter too. Applying a very light layer on my cheeks was almost like a great glowy bronzer. When I apply this product on top of my skincare and skin tint and pat it into the skin, it does blend the way I hoped it would. It looks creamy and doesn't sit on top of my makeup, but it can definitely be built up to be much more dramatic too. I'd love to hear how this performs for you. They say it plays well on top of foundation, but I've heard mixed reviews. This wasn't a product I picked up initially, but after seeing so many good reviews, I went back and added the Perfect Strokes Matte Liquid Liner to my cart. This is described as a long wearing, waterproof matte liquid eyeliner. I've mentioned before that I usually find felt tip liners easier to work with than brush tips in my uncoordinated eyeliner world. That's just what seems to work best, but this is making me reconsider that. The brand says you need to shake it up before use and store with the tip down so the brush stays wet and ready to use. The brush tip has over a thousand vegan bristles and feels very flexible. It's easy to maneuver along the lash line and draw thin or thicker lines depending on the pressure you apply, but the tip is also very fine so you can get really precise if you need to. It feels very inky so you have plenty to work with, but not messy. Absolutely jet black. When I stamp this onto the corner of my eyes, following the angle of my lower lash line up for a more subtle wing, it was a one and done move. No patchiness, no layering needed. Selena's winged liner is one of her signature looks, so I'm sure a lot of people will have fun channeling her style with this. Plenty of you asked if I'd be trying the With Gratitude Dewy Lip Balms. If you've visited my channel before, there's a very good chance you've come across a lip balm video. I'm a serious tinted balm and sheer lipstick lover, so I loved the sound of this. It's called a hydrating lip balm with a kiss of dewy, buildable color. They say it's the kind of tint you can throw on without a mirror and still get it right, but 
may definitely disagree. This is one of the most tinted, tinted lip balms I've ever tried. The color is so intense and creamy that it's not necessarily that sheer if you swipe it on firmly. It's called a light to medium tint, but as a sheer lip lover, I'd definitely call it medium to heavy. I like it, it's just not what I was expecting. In terms of the weightless hydration that lasts all day claim, no. But tinted balms usually don't do it for me in fairness. These feel creamy and comfortable, not sticky, but it's not something I'd reach for if my lips were actually dry. In fact, because it's so pigmented, I almost consider this a lightweight creamy lipstick. The design has a magnetic closure but it's quite a weak magnet so it doesn't snap shut and can easily get out of line. Just looks like the sort of thing that could get bumped in your bag and come undone so I wish it had been a bit stronger. Praise is described as a muted peach, but it's a pretty bright peach to me. Selena wears this colour in some promo images, so I loved the idea of a touch of this with a peachy blush look. At full strength, this is almost quite a bold light orange on me, so I prefer patting it in. The scent of this formula is reasonably strong. Doesn't bother me at all, but it's certainly noticeable. A sort of cocoa butter vanilla vibe. Thankful is called a nude mauve. I wanted to try this shade after seeing it on Selena too. It sort of looked like a nice peachy nude on her, but I get much more of a caramel hazelnut impression in person. To create a true sheer even look, I've been patting the bullet on very lightly or dabbing it onto the center of my lips, then blending it out with my fingertip. Support is called a plum brown. This one is definitely the best fit for me. I love brownie berries, cocoa berry as Fenty calls it. This is really nice to naturally tint your lips or layer to enjoy a much more moody color. It's a great rich rosewood sort of tone. Really liking the look and feel of these. They're just way more bold than I expected for a tinted balm. Appreciate is described as a cool brown and that's spot on. If you're trying to channel a 90s chocolatey lip look, this will do the trick. It's a really deep, cool brown, no red berry tones here. Once again, you can see just how intense the color is. I'll show you a sheer version in a second. These certainly have a creamy, balmy feel on the lips and plenty of shine, but let's take a look at a quick swatch jump cut so you can see something closer to how I wear them. This type of tinted balm is much easier to apply on the go. Last but not least, the Lip Souffle Matte Lip Creams, one of the most eye-catching, bright products from the range. This is a weightless, air-whipped lip cream. Regular viewers will know that you very rarely, pun intended, see liquid lipsticks on my channel. They're just too drying for me, but I do enjoy the style of lip powders. Products like Sunny's Face Lip Dip, Chanel Rouge Allure Liquid Powder, or Burberry Lip Velvet Crush. As a result, this velvety whipped matte formula sounded promising. It's all about rich color and nourishing hydration. Didn't really get any of that, but rich color, absolutely. I saw Selena say that these are so weightless she forgets she's wearing them and I agree. It feels really barely there and only slightly powdery and velvety when you rub your lips together. Not drying at all on me, although the powdery texture means it can cling to any dry patches. So you can find a recent lip scrub video on my channel for reference. The standout shade Inspire is a bright red and Selena's go-to color. This is such a fun, summery, mood-boosting red. I've been more and more drawn to warm reds in recent years and this is a beauty. These have such a punch of pigment when you swipe them on, but not a flat, matte liquid lip look. The fluffier feel means you can very easily turn these into a soft, blurred lip look too by blending with your fingers. I also went for the shade Brave at the last minute after seeing how it looked on Harry Makes It Up and it's gorgeous on Amanda Z too. Can you tell we're usually fans of the same kind of muted terracotta shades? This one seems like it could have been described as a muted peach too. It has a slight hint of brown to it. It's not a bright or pinky peach, it's much deeper. I wondered if it could be a little too stark on me, but I love it. This formula has a slightly vanilla, cakey smell, but it's not as noticeable as the lip balm scent to me. So glad I gave Rare Beauty Go. I can definitely pick favorites and products that really impressed. Joy, the dewy peachy blush, love the matte terracotta blush, the eyeliner, love working with that, the dewy lip balm in support, and the lip souffle in inspire. Please let me know your favorites. The brand recently released some holiday sets with cute mini combinations, definitely a nice way to test products for the first time at a lower price and more realistic size that you might actually be able to finish. I can't wait to hear your thoughts on Rare Beauty in the comments. What were your first impressions of the brand? Was it what you expected from Selena? Did I buy what you expected? What have you tried so far? Did you go mad on launch day or hold back a bit? I'd love to hear which products have stood out to you, what left you feeling a bit flat, or what you have your eye on next. What would you like to see the brand launch in future too? Thanks for watching. See you next time.